fluids 13 from TFS. Uh, why don't we use the five foot suction lift on 813 for the pressure terms, but on 811, we use the 100 feet for the pressure terms. Is it because it is small? So I have to give the folks on this, on this um, session a little bit of context in order for this um, answer to have any meaning um, beyond just what's there. So I'm gonna draw, uh, I wanna distinguish the comparison problem that you're referencing 811 from the problem 813, which you're comparing it to. So for 13, we have a situation where there's a pump and on the suction side of that pump, there's a reservoir and it's lower by, I think, five feet. And on the discharge side of the pump, it goes up and there's a pressure gauge at some higher level and that goes up about 30 feet. And then as part of solving the problem, we have to apply the Bernoulli equation. So there's three pieces to the Bernoulli equation. There's the static pressure, the velocity pressure, and the elevation change. So for the static pressure for this one, it was given as 10 PSIG. There's a, we're neglecting velocity in this one. And then the Delta Z is the total difference. So it's the sum of the static suction lift, the five feet, and the discharge head, the 30 feet. So it ends up being 30 plus five, which is 35 feet. So those are kind of treated separately, right? We have the static pressure that's added that we know from the gauge, the velocity pressure is zero and the height change. And um, so I don't think you really had that much of a question about this problem. It was really contrasting this problem with 11, which we'll talk about next. But I think everything there is pretty tidy and, and pretty clear. 11, on the other hand, created a bit of confusion. And I think 11 is probably the more interesting problem. So in 11, there's a, a reservoir and there's a pump basically sitting at the bottom. So it's some inlet taking from, from the reservoir and pumping up to a reservoir that's above the level, um, I guess a tank that's above the reservoir by another hundred feet. So if this is the datum, this would be a hundred feet above that, but it's actually 200 feet above the pump, which is at, sitting at the bottom like that. So if we're applying the Bernoulli equation here, and we have to think about these three terms again, delta P, delta V, and delta Z. Similarly, we're gonna assume that the velocity term is zero, but how are we gonna treat P and Z in this situation? And the answer to that kind of depends on where we establish our datum. So in the solution that I did in the video and in the book, I set the datum at the level of the pump. That just made the most sense to me. I think that's the most typical. We put it at the center line of the pump. And what that means is that the discharge head above the pump is the full 200 feet. So I defined Z as 200. But then for the Delta P, we have to compare if let's say we're making this state one and this state two, what's the difference in the static pressure between state one and state two? Well, both have the pressure of the atmosphere sitting on top of them. So that's gonna wash out. But state one also has 100 feet worth of hydrostatic pressure sitting on it. So if we do the difference in static pressure between two and one, it's going to be zero. Well, not zero, one atmosphere, but again, it's going to wash out. So it's zero minus 100 feet. Now you could turn that 100 feet into the, whatever the corresponding PSI is by dividing by 2.31, but we actually prefer to have it in feet anyway. And it is a column of water that's 100 feet high. So I'll just keep it in feet. And I defined the static pressure then as minus 100 feet. So then when you add all this together, the total HA, the total head that needs to be added by the pump is 200 minus 100, which is 100 feet. And that ends up getting put into the power equation. And that's, that's the approach to the solution. But I think an alternate way to approach this, which is not included in my video solution and not included in my written solution, but you're, you're welcome to try on as a possibility is, hey, what if we set the datum not necessarily at where the pump is, but somewhere else. Like what if we were to set the datum at the top of the reservoir? What would that mean? Well, that would mean, because we have the, um, whatever the height of the column of water sitting on the suction side of the pump is, 
we're sort of getting that energy for free in terms of pumping that water back up to the same height. So it almost doesn't matter where in the reservoir a pump is. It could be higher, it could be near the top. That sort of has a canceling effect. And if I were to take that all the way to an extreme, I could bring this pump all the way up to the top of the water level. And it really wouldn't change what the pump is up against. It would lose all of that height on the suction side, but it would gain all back. It has to do way less on the discharge side because it's so much closer to its target. So you can sort of push that all the way up to the top. And then you end up with a delta Z of 100 instead of 200 and a delta P of zero instead of minus 100. But either way, the sum is still 100 feet at the end of the day. And that's the same number that goes into the head added by the pump, which is going to be um, volume flow rate times head divided by 3960. And maybe there's an efficiency in there. And I think there's elbows in there too. There's minor losses, but uh, that's a whole other thing. So that's a long-winded answer to the question um, why we don't use the, the, I think, I hope that by going through this, 13 is pretty clear and the degree to which 11 is unclear is hopefully um, uncovered by the fact that you have a couple of different options about how to, how to set it all up.